You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Resilience is remarkable. Mary Walden, founder of Change Therapy, reveals the power of resilience on Big Waves, Strong Boat. Listen as Mary guides her listeners on a transformational journey, weaving inner self-love with learning to share that love with others and defining the role resilience plays in achieving both. So please welcome the host of Big Waves, Strong Boat, Mary Walden. Welcome to Big Wave Strong Boat. Last week, we talked about loneliness and making friends. We walked through about a half a dozen action steps to build the resilience of connection in your life. So have you reached out to any old friends? Have you found a group to join or started your own group yet? If you missed last week's show, you can hear it and all of our other shows by going to iTunes and just search on Big Wave Strong Boat and subscribe for free. And so you that way you won't miss an episode. Um, so as I was preparing for this show, you know, uh, last week was such an interesting topic to me. I felt like I wanted to kind of drill down a little bit more and something that has become so glaringly obvious to me and to so many researchers and commentators that our co- our culture really prizes introverts, people who are talkative and sociable and action-oriented, enthusiastic, friendly, outgoing. We prize big personalities. And there's nothing wrong with that. But what about the people who that isn't so obvious to them how to engage with others? And as isolated as we have become in this country, there are interactions and observational lessons many people just miss out on. So that's what tonight's show is about. How do we actually engage with others? Last week, we talked about things we need to do to make friends as an adult. And this week, we're actually going to address with a little more detail the nuances of making that happen. And before we get started with our conversation tonight, I have a recommendation for you uh, to support those efforts. It is also in case you went looking for a group to join over this past week and you couldn't find one. So here is a fantastic set of groups for you to check out on meetup.com. They are called Awareness, Courage, and Love Groups, or ACL for short, Uh, So you just go to meetup.com and search awareness, courage, and love, and to see if there's an ACL group in your part of the globe. Awareness, courage, and love groups have over 10,000 members worldwide, and they meet in 92 cities, in 25 countries, and on six continents. Um, At an ACL meetup, you will connect more authentically with yourself. These are amazing groups. You connect with yourself and with others. You create a more meaningful and passionate life. And in the group, you learn and practice open-hearted presence, self-expression, deep listening, which we're going to talk a little bit more about tonight, acceptance and compassion, self-care, embracing, embracing vulnerability, giving and receiving support and living more boldly. So after every meeting, you will leave with exercises and lifestyle tools to deepen your relationships and to move towards what you value most in your life. 
um, each participant I've read will also be given the option to complete complete a brief questionnaire about their experience to compile data that will improve the effectiveness of this conscious community that is growing worldwide in creating a more open-hearted presence, interpersonal connectedness, and passionate living. So if there isn't an ACL meetup near you and you're interested in starting one, you can go to uh, livewithacl.org to find out more info. You can also go on our Facebook page and uh, click on that link there that is um, available to you there. Okay, so let's get our discussion tonight uh, started. I want to explore this notion of introverts and extroverts and the nuts and bolts of connecting with other people. And of course, here to help us tonight with our discussion is my on-air producer, Dean Minard. Welcome, Dean. Hi, Mary. Are you an introvert or an extrovert? Oh my gosh. Oh, we're so going to get to that. I am a total <laughs> introvert. But before we get there... That's crazy, really? I know. I, I know. Am. I always think about that too. Yeah. Right? Okay. But before we get there, I want to know, do you agree or does that resonate with you? This notion that I, you know, in America, we really do prize the extrovert. The introvert is a little bit nudged out, you know? I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, well, I, I see how you could think that, but I guess my question would be in, in what context? Because, you know, I guess it's the old thing, the squeaky wheel gets the mm. most grease, things mm -hmm. like that. So they get attention, but do they have inner peace? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm just thinking about, yeah. you know, the values that really matter. And I yeah. watch, uh, in these days, I watch uh, and listen to a lot of the political, you know, stuff on CNN and other things like that. And at some point, it's just like the loudest one wins. It's not the one right. with the right or the, the most logical uh, point. It's just the loudest, the one who can say the, their point, the strongest and bulldoze. So yeah. I can see why bulldozing and ex, you know, that's an extreme. I can see right. why an extrovert would appear to be sort of, you know, handed the keys or stealing the keys of yeah. conversations and things like that. But, you know, I guess what's the real prize there? I don't, I don't know. And I guess my question when you thought about this is like, what is that in what what what's the favor you're talking about that you feel that they get or you have observed that they get? Yeah, so I just think that the qualities, and we'll explore more specifically what those are tonight. But I feel like the qualities of an extrovert are more prized in our culture. The person who can speak publicly, the person who can engage in. Um, you know, who, who's very social, a person who can um, sort of give their 30 second elevator speech quickly to some random person that they've met on, on the way up to their business meeting. You know, it just seems that this sort of being on and being polished and being outward is really kind of core to how we operate in the States. Yeah, I, I I I think it's global. Do you think it's isolated to here in the states? Because I mean, I think I think it's such a fast-paced world that you yeah. you just you you have to sort of stake your claim and make your mark, don't you? Otherwise, yeah. you you do kind of just get taken out by the wave. I think so. I mean, although I know when I've traveled to other countries, I mean. Americans kind of stick out of the pile. And I don't think it's just because of our fashion choices. I think <laughs> it's because, you know, um, well, the obnoxious uh, American oh, kind right. of, yeah, we're, we're direct and we're, we're loud and, you know, we uh, self advocate and all these different things where, um, you know, in, in other cultures and European cultures, particularly, um, I'm thinking of, you know, like in France and and in Britain, that things are just a little bit um, more, more subdued. Subtle. Yeah, more a little more subtle. But I but I also I hear your point though. It it's one of the reasons why you know we're uh, very successful in the global scheme because we do kind of mm, yeah. go after the resources and go after uh, you know sort of win the win the sale, if you will. Sure. Yeah. Uh, 
And again, I know that you're not one to generalize, but th- that's a broad stroke to, to yeah. you know Americans. But yeah, there is definitely a culture I think of in this country that you know it's winning. You know, you want to win, you want to be first, you want to be loudest, mm-hmm. you want to be biggest. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's yeah. why we have donut eating contests, Mary. Duh. That's right. Duh, and and hot dogs too. Oh. All right, we're going to uh, talk more about this when we return. You're listening to Big Wave Strong Boat live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Stay tuned. Dr. Rob Moyer is the director of the Ocean River Institute, and he is passionate about saving the ocean by helping dolphins suffering from nitrogen pollution. Nitrogen is a dangerous pollutant, affecting our oceans, altering ocean ecosystems, and contributing to global warming. The Ocean River Institute provides opportunities to make a difference and encourages people to go the distance for savvy stewardship of a greater and bluer planet Earth. Partnered with organizations from Massachusetts to Florida, Alaska to the Caribbean, the Ocean River Institute's mission is to foster involvement in conservation and environmental monitoring by facilitating grassroots efforts at local and regional levels. Hello, I'm Rob Moyer of the Ocean River Institute. Please visit our website at oceanriver.org. Sign up for free e-alerts. You may call us at 617-661-6647. Our email address is info at Ocean River. Become informed and then act with us. Thank you. If you seek a courageous advocate, prepare to champion your rights with consumer service agencies that support aging populations. Carol Ann Hamilton is the one for you. Carol Ann is an elder care coach, author, and speaker with a quarter million hours lived experience successfully supporting unculpable aging parents. As a result of a challenging journey, Carol Ann revolutionizes how stressed out caregivers restore serenity to their worlds. She also brings over 25 years of change management expertise in Fortune 500 settings to catalyze urgent transformation within the elder care industry. Carol Ann is a popular speaker at conferences across North America. She has appeared via TV, radio, and print globally. Now you can tune in weekly to get a dose of her inspiration, plus down-to-earth advice to cope with even the most difficult aging parents. Listen Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on Bold Brave Media and TuneIn Radio. Welcome back to Big Wave Strong Boat. I'm your host, Mary Walden, and I'm here with my on-air producer, Dean Minert, and we were talking about introverts and extroverts, well, primarily uh, how extroverted our uh, culture is here in the U.S. and and I was trying to make the argument. I don't know how successfully, but that but we really do prize um, you know the elements of the extroverted personality. And Dino, before the break, you pointed out our hyper attention to competition and that kind of thing. Sure, I mean you know just in the setup of this is like oh we prize that as if that's the best and the other is bad or is there a judgment there it's like yeah. oh yeah i don't know i mean uh, yeah i think that you definitely i mean i think i'm have a hard time because i feel bad saying it but like oh, why wouldn't you prize it because it's mm. the people that are like you know uh confident assuming mm-hmm. it's not you know bluster it's yeah. people that are confident they're sure of themselves or they're they're self-aware maybe i don't know it's hard again to generalize but yeah. that's what i would aspire to be i would aspire to be an extrovert but as i wrote as i knew we were talking about this and you gave me the outline i was like well i think i'm an extrovert but then i think i'm an introvert so hmm. i think there's a balance there that you need to look at and i think some places being an extrovert is the prize. And I think sometimes places being an introvert is the prize, you know, if it's the self self introspection and things like that. So my goal would be to sort of have the best of all worlds. And yes. So you can do that on me now. Go. Okay. Ready? Go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. So, well, really this whole notion of introversion and extroversion really is as a personality trait it is on a continuum. I mean, we can sure. all, th- yeah, we can always think of people who kind of fit the more extremes, um, you know, on, on uh, the outliers on either end. I think the the stats are something like, um, I don't know, twenty to thirty percent. But then, as I'm thinking these through, it's not it's not going to add up to a hundred. But it, it roughly twenty to thirty percent are uh, more solidly introverted, and then. Uh, 20 to 30 percent 
are more solidly extroverted and then most everybody else is in the continuum on the inside, but you know, or uh, in between those two, but you know, the interesting piece about this, which I didn't really know, even though I, I did years ago read Susan Cain's book. Did you ever read that book? Quiet? Oh, no, no. Okay. <laughs> it's a really good book about really kind of, uh, shining some light on introvert introverts and the value of extroverts. And I, I think she does, uh, a better argument than, uh, than I've made about the, uh, notion of how we prize extroverts in our culture. But in any event, that as you dig down on this notion of, um, introvert and extrovert, it, there really is a physiological component, um, and almost like a, a wiring component. And you and I have definitely talked about sort of, um, whether presentations or how we are, are the nature and nurture argument kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and really this, there's a strong argument, um, for the, uh, nature part of introversion and extroversion. And so as we're going to walk through the definitions of these and then, so before we do that, would you intuitively, um, determine yourself to be an in introvert or an extrovert? You said kind of a combination, but are you leaning one way or another? It really depends on my mood, I think, you know, okay. uh, and, and the circumstance, because I probably would, <laughs> be an extrovert with introvert rising if that's yeah. a thing okay Just because you know i'm sort of comfortable out in public but then i don't like people so i don't know right. <laughs> <laughs> i okay. mean that's not true i'm trying to be better yeah. out in the world but sure um well, how about you oh i'm for, i am for sure an introvert and, um, you know, which is so crazy because you, you're the you one know, who's like, I want to do a radio show. So that to me is incongruous. I know. You know? Isn't that weird? Yeah. Well, I, I think it does. It's what you said. You know, we can be sort of different dimensions of ourselves in different circumstances. And, you know, the key difference, I guess the key difference that I've surmised is that it really comes down to, are you energized by being around a lot of people or are you energized by being with yourself. Mm. So, well, yeah, yeah. So how do you refuel? Do you refuel by being with groups of people? That's an extrovert. Hmm. And do you refuel by being alone? That's an introvert. Okay. So this is overly simplistic, but that's the core element. Is it really? I mean, you're not making this up like your statistics no. from just a few minutes yeah. ago, are you? Right. No, okay. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> no, these are the, this is the core thing, but let's. Well, then I would say I'm an introvert also because I do not like crowds and, you know, right. unless I have to like put on that face and, you know, be like, Hey, I'm here tonight and I can do it if I, yes. if I have to. Right. But, yeah. So that's what I think makes uh, determining where you fit a challenge because, you know, we can all kind of, I mean, we all have those moments of being able to sort of show up in the way we need to show up. Yeah. But really that well, it. Do it we comes, all, all. Well, you've all, met. many of us oftentimes. How about yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. And, you know, the, to be able to. Um, you know, do what we got to do to get the job done. But then, uh, really what happens after that? How do you want to go home and have ice cream? <laughs> exactly. Do you want to go home uh, by yourself and not say anything Correct. to anyone else? Right. And sort of, you know, guard the tub. Okay. Uh -huh. So, so uh, All right. extrovert, I mean, ex okay. even if you're an introvert, like you still want to have relationships and friends and things like that. So how does this lead into the, the discussion of making friends? Because I have to say that last week I was like, oh, it's about like friends after 50 or that thing. Yeah. And I felt like we talked a lot about stuff, but I just felt a little bit like, oh, we didn't deliver on our promise because it was oh, things okay. like say hi to people. It's like, oh, right. okay. But I wanted some secrets, I guess, but maybe there mm -hmm. aren't any secrets. So I'm, oh, anyway, well, we're going to get to some secrets okay. tonight for All sure. Right. For sure. Well, you know, here's the thing. And here's why I, here was, was my line of reasoning around the sort of introvert extrovert thing is because you're right. The stuff we talked about last week. Okay. Go do that. Right. Um, and then you'll make friends. Well, if you're an extrovert, I think those things would be 
easy for you to do. 100%. 100%, you're doing them, right? Anyway. You're doing them. Well, that's what I was going to say. If you're an extrovert, you're probably doing them anyway, and you really didn't need it to t- <laughs> us to tell you. So I thought, okay, well, wait a minute. So that means introvert, extrovert. Okay, well, let's uh, explore what that means. And then probably tonight we're going to be helping more the introverts put the rubber to the road. So that's what we're going to do when we get back. You're okay. listening to Big Waves Strong Boat live on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Stay tuned. Renaissance woman, trailblazer, maverick. Those are just some of the words to describe to Chandra Poulard, owner and CEO of House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC, a woman minority veteran owned entertainment company based in Washington, D.C. Ms. Poulard served 10 years honorably in the United States Navy and departed from active duty to pursue her dreams of becoming an entertainment mogul. House of Virgo Entertainment offers script writing, producing, directing, DJ services, editing, and more. They cater to businesses, corporations, college students, working professionals, aspiring artists, and nonprofit organizations, and employ veterans of the armed forces. Tashandra Poulard is pioneering the way we view media and taking her brand global. Visit her at www.houseofvirgoentertainment.com or call 281 515 3740 and like her on Facebook at House of Virgo Entertainment LLC. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy to understand format through her company smith title services renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smith TitleServices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. Welcome back to Big Wave Strong Boat. I'm your host, Mary Walden. Just as a reminder, you can find my guided meditations on Insight Timer and also at www.BigWavesStrongBoat.com. And of course, you can hear our past shows on iTunes. You can subscribe for free. Go to iTunes and search Big Wave Strong Boat. Dino, before the break, we were talking about uh, how I got on this tangent of introvert, extrovert, and how it relates to all of our friend making skills. So did that make sense? Okay. It does. Yes. Excellent. Okay. So I thought it would be, um, you know, uh, complete of us to do sort of a full definition of what an extrovert is. So yes, we talked about Uh, those who get energized or re-energized by being around a lot of people. Um, Extroverts also like to talk. They love to talk. And they love to talk with anyone, people they know, people they don't know. This, again, is another reason why probably last week's show was not of any interest to people who are extroverts. Um, (laughs) um, And two, socializing, um, you know, yes, we talked about that, uh, helps you feel energized. That really is a big one, that you are re-energized by other people. Um, Extroverts also like to solve problems by discussing them. Now, that's a little bit of a red herring because I'm for sure um, Hello. an introvert, yeah. but look at what we're doing, right? Yeah, look we're what discussing. you do every day. And look what I do every day. Yep. So, mm, I don't know. Uh, four, people describe you as friendly and approachable. So, extroverts are friendly and approachable. Um, five, you're very open and easy to get to know. And number six, you may be more impulsive. So less thinking through, less slowing down, um, you know, more kind of uh, shoot first, ask questions later. Okay. So do any of these um, core elements of extroversion uh, resonate with you? Well, sure. But again, I see both sides. It's like, well, I'm yes, I'm this, but no, I'm not that. But yes, I'm this. And, um, you know, like I said, I think that 
I'm very complicated. You're Mary. so complicated. <laughs> You're so complicated, changing right. in every situation. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, okay. uh, yeah, go on. Yeah. So anyhow, that's the extrovert. The introvert, which I think really is, uh, you know, um, particularly it's the group of folks that, you know, maybe uh, reaching out to new friends and um, even old friends, we talked about that last week, might not be, not come as naturally and might um, feel uncomfortable. And so um, the big one, being around lots of people drains your energy. That's a sign of an introvert. And your solitude is what rejuvenates you. So being on your own, being alone. So maybe if you have gone out, maybe you even enjoy being out with folks that you know, maybe a small group of close friends. That's uh, oftentimes what uh, introverts enjoy, but then still coming home and um, needing to rejuvenate yourself by being alone. And, uh, one of the other elements is people often describe you as quiet and may find it difficult to get to know you. So I don't, I don't know that, uh, I think this is one of the things that people confuse, um, introversion with shyness. Mm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And really introversion isn't shyness. It's, there's a difference between being quiet and reserved and sort of observing what's going on. Whereas shyness is really about fear and like being afraid of people or having social anxiety. Um, Introverts just don't spend a lot of time necessarily interacting with other people. Or right. Well, it's not, interesting. When yeah. you said last week we were talking to the extroverts and they didn't need it and then worry right. about the introverts. <laughs> it's like, and the introverts don't want it. So right. it's like, <laughs> well, why it's are just, we leading those horses to the water? I you know what I mean? Know. I don't even well, know. Well, I mean, what the, the core of what you brought up last week was, you know, loneliness and the people. Do they have connectivity and the, the numbers that I guess you made up last week, too, about, right. you know, how many people in. <laughs> 1987 no yeah you know, the, the facts that you had said right. about right. people and, yeah. and and the 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 prejudice for my end is like well of course everyone wants that or everyone needs that i i, I just want to cut through it and be like do they you know yeah. i mean maybe maybe we just let the the wheat go one way and the chafe another you know is there something yeah. wrong yeah. with that yeah I don't, well oh, yeah. Uh, on the one hand, no, there's nothing wrong with that, especially if you look at it in terms of personality types. But if you look at it in terms of that 70%, you know, there's a lot more research on happiness these days. And uh, the research repeatedly says that 70% of our happiness comes from relationships. So, and, and, Loneliness is at an epidemic proportion in the U.S. now. So if the vast majority of, fr of happiness comes from relationships and a lot of people are reporting feeling lonely and feeling reporting they have fewer friends to deeply connect with, I kind of thought, okay, well, let's um, attend to this notion of friendships. This, how this figures into personality types, yeah, it does muddy the waters when you look at it in terms of extremes. Because remember, um, introverts and extroverts are very few of us that are solidly in one camp or the other. So, yes, it it does there is contradiction in the sense of the desire for relationships and uh, human beings are fundamentally relational. And, uh, you know, right. I see a mix of introverts and extroverts in my practice and all of them are managing challenges, relational challenges, and and generally... Because of their desire to do so. We're not trying to right. force people. It's right. Like Right. right. So that's where I'm just trying to be clear that it's yes. it's like, you know, you must do this. It's like, that seems right. cool. It's like, I don't want to. Unless it's, it's based on their shyness and they want to, but they don't know how to or that, they, you know. That's know. right. And if and if it's a if it's a question of fear, well, then that's more um, lending to social anxiety. And that would be a good time to reach out to a professional to get some support around social anxiety, because that can be so debilitating and 
um, and really can, you know, limits a, limit a person's experience and uh, enjoyment of life. So yes, all of these things that we're talking about tonight are purely optional. There will be no uh, meetup police coming to your house, uh, no, no one checking on you that you're joining groups. But um, if somebody does have a little uh, extrovert or introvert in them, they could call us at 866-451-1451. Yes, please do call in. We're going to take a quick break and you can call in on the break and we'll let you hold on and then we'll talk to you in the next segment. You're listening to Big Wave Strong Boat live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. WikiWags brings harmony back into your home for male dogs and their owners. Inventor and entrepreneur Linda Jangula has created the disposable doggy diaper wraps made with the male dog in mind. The built-in wicking ability prevents rashing and other potential health issues for your dog. Each wrap comes in four sizes and has dual reattachable magic tabs for easy adjustments. And each size has a 7-inch logo strip for adjustability. So they are comfortable and easy to use. No more fuss, just leave the mess to us. Whether you're in or out, your dog will be free to run about. Stop cleaning and start enjoying your home, and you can even leave your dog alone. To order your WikiWags, visit WikiWags.com, or to find out where to buy WikiWags in your town, visit MyWikiWags.com and start enjoying having man's best friend around. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 BC when the Sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 BC to the time that men began achieving political power around 3000 BC. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Welcome back to Big Wave Strong Boat. I'm your host, Mary Walden, here with Dean Minert. And uh, we were talking about, why would you even listen to this show today? <laughs> because um, I'm talking about making friends and that it is your choice, that you should not feel compelled to go out and do this um, unless but you, you know really what? I want mean, to. Now I'm such a flip-flopper. <laughs> Because I know you're that you're, flopper. yeah, I'm a flip flopper. Because I know that you're in the business of helping people. That's what you do yep. all the day. And I know that the ultimate goal, and you know, talking on this radio show is that. But I think the other thing is just, it, you know, we don't have to. In my mind, I think, oh, we need the answers. It's like maybe it's just a conversation. You know exactly. what I mean? Exactly. Maybe it's just like, how do you feel and do this? And there's not like, here's what you need to do, A, B, C, right. D, E. Here's why you're right or you're wrong or you're broken or we can fix this. You know, right. there's so much of that in the world that what I what I like about talking to you is just like the idea. And it's like, oh, yeah, I feel that way, too. But I don't feel that way. But so it's right. just an expression. So, right. Um, well, um I think that that's definitely true. And uh, considering more on this notion of introverts, I think there is another component that also sort of is the slam dunk that you and I may be more introverted than we realized. What is it? Uh, it's that you're very self-aware. And also, I think there's another part of this that we also assume... Self-aware is not self-obsessed, right? No. No. Right. <laughs> no. Luckily, but, I'm both. No, I'm both. <laughs> which makes you incredibly entertaining. Yeah. So uh -huh. this other part, though, of the self-awareness is, I think, is the assumption that people want to be self-aware. And I, I think that that may be our, a bias that we share, that people want to know these other mm. things and maybe they don't but yeah, yeah. You're good on uh, them, you know what i mean <laughs> right like... right um so the other thing that about an introvert too much stimulation leaves you feeling distracted and unfocused and really kind of wired um introverts also like to learn by watching 
mm-hmm. and they're drawn to jobs that involve independence and not necessarily answering to someone else. I mean, we all have bosses, but you know, and even even uh, being in business for yourself, but still, they like that notion of um, independence, yeah. and that introverts uh, are less inclined to be impulsive. They slow down and they think before they speak. So. Not these the are all yeah. no, these aren't the worst things, right? Yeah. And and so um, I guess that's the thing, you know. It's just because big personalities often overshadow the sort of quiet, contemplative person in the corner. And you know, if if a person, maybe it also just boils down to confidence, because you can be a confident introvert, you can be a a, a person that just you know kind of knows that. They'd rather listen than talk or, um, you know, observe before they engage. And so, yeah. I don't know any, but I, I feel like mm-hmm. a lot of monks are introverts. So it's like, I'm not going up against that. Exactly, uh, you know what I mean? right? Exactly. Like, you got me. You exactly. <laughs> so, okay. So if if you accept the premise that 70% of our happiness comes from relationships, then um, it would follow that having skill in uh, cultivating and maintaining relationships sure. may be of importance to you. So last week we asked um, about, or we talked about asking questions as being a core tool uh, in, uh, cultivating relationships right. and engaging Being interested instead of trying to be interesting. Exactly. Yeah, but yeah. you know, I felt that we could have done a better job with offering the types of questions. And oh. honestly, I was just really excited to hear the kind of conversation starter questions that you might come up with. So Me? I looked around, yes, you oh. especially, oh. Oh. because no. I thought it would be very entertaining. Uh, because, you know, I was looking around on the Webernets for this, mm. and you know what they said that uh, they said was the most effective opening question is, uh, hey, how are you? I thought that was so boring. Really? <laughs> really that's really. the most effective? Yes, that's the most the effective. Who is the source on these, though? Because how uh-huh. many times a day do you, in pleasantry, say, how are you? And they say, fine, how are you? It's like, you don't really know. It's just, it doesn't it's, go anywhere. He doesn't, I mean, and it's not, you're not even, who's going to, like, Mary's going to say, hey, how are you? It's like, well, not good. Or right, you're like, exactly. what am I going to say that? <laughs> I mean, I just, I, right. I, I, it's such a silly thing, I yeah. think. But, but yeah. it's weird to say that that's the most popular, maybe in this right. texting generation. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. But I did find some more entertaining ones. But, oh, uh, good. Okay. Like, what was the last funny video you saw? <laughs> <laughs> Again, all of these have to have context because you can't just be like on the subway and just look at somebody and say like, what was the last funny video you saw? And you'd be like, wait, what? Wait, what? Why are you talking to me, creeper? Well, I'll tell you, there is something creepy because I hesitate talking to people sometimes. And it's, I I wonder if you have this too, or people out Mm -hmm. in the world do, because you think they're going to think they, you want something from them, whether it's like a hookup, like I want to be mm-hmm. creepy and go out with you or yes. whether it's like I'm trying to sell you something or something because people don't do it. So, right. you know, it's a real dance to just, you know, make a contact and be like, hey, oh, well, uh, you know, oh, what a pretty blouse that has or something. Can you take it off? No. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, I do think, though, it depends on kind of what part of the country you're in, because for sure in Chicago, it's not so common for people on the street to just sort of talk to people they don't know. Mm. But in, um, see, I would think that would be Midwest kind of like friendly people, but you're thinking it's big city. I think it's big city because definitely outside of the city, people do that more. Certainly in Wisconsin, they do. They're very friendly. Um, LA probably less so. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, but it is, it, it, the thing about LA is you, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm, 
encapsulating. You don't really come across people that much because you're in your car a lot right, and right. having road rage. But then, right. you know, the people that you do come across <laughs> are the people you basically know. It's at, you know, the market or the dry cleaner or, you know. Right. I'm shocked, by the way, at the market, just how rude people are, you know, when they're on their phone or they're texting and somebody's there doing a service for you. Yes, they're being paid, but hey, how are you today? And people just ignore them if I'm behind they ignore them. them. I and know. you just want to hit the person on the head and say, are you like, this is a human interaction. Right. Yes. Yes. It's definitely, I, there it has been a deterioration of manners. I would definitely say the, the internet and the phones in the hand definitely yeah. has helped deteriorate uh, manners. Commercials. Yeah. Commercials. Oh, no, those are great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, we need to go to a commercial now. We're going to take a break and we're going to come back. Um, again, call us 866 451 1451. You're listening to Big Wave Strong Boat Live on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Stay tuned. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Life is a Renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age. Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real-life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Introducing BetterHomeAndGarden.com. That's www.betterhomeandgarden.com with just the letter N in Better Home and Garden. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the highest quality products on the market that are environmentally safe and effective and to make them available to you at the lowest possible prices. BetterHomeAndGarden.com understands that kind of creativity and do-it-yourself attitude. Thus, we developed our website, BetterHomeAndGarden.com. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the following products right online. Bath, bedding, collectibles, craft, sewing and hobby, food and beverage, furniture, home decor, kitchen and dining, lamps and lighting, large appliances, musical instruments, outdoor cooking, patio items, pet supplies, plant and garden, rug and floor covering, small appliances, travel and luggage, and so much more. Better Home and Garden is an online retailer offering a wide variety of high-quality brand name merchandise at discount prices. Our service is personal and we aim to please. Visit us at www.betterhomeandgarden.com. Make your home your own. Welcome back to Big Wave Strong Boat. I'm your host, Mary Walden, here with Dean Minert. Just as a reminder, you can find my guided meditations on www.bigwavesstrongboat.com and on the app Insight Timer. Okay, Dino, let's get back to the all-important first question Opening question, opening line, not for a pickup, but right. just to make a social engagement. Say at a party, let's not even say on the street, because at, at a party or a business event, the creeper factor, I would hope, would yeah, be yeah, lower, yeah, 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 right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, I guess I don't have a go-to sort of thing, but I guess my MO would be to sort of find some sort of commonality, not about the person, yeah. but about the experience. So if it's at a party to be like, don't you love pigs in a blanket? You know, something like that. <laughs> or, right. um, it, you know, isn't, uh, aren't the wine pours very small or don't you, you know, how many, sure. like, something like that, that is observational, observational and not just like random, like you know, <laughs> out of the blue. Cause I think that's a little bit like I'm go going goodbye. So if right. I want to meet somebody, I try and, you know, find something that hopefully they're aware of and I'm aware of and it's it's an insight you know so I yes. point up an insight so that would be where I would go what about you I think that's good well I think that's really good well you know when you look this up um uh, and uh, for good opening uh, conversation starters they're random questions everything ranging from what do you do to get rid of stress you uh, cannot ask no, somebody that I, you're meeting. You just can't marry. I know. 
<laughs> That's why people talk about the weather. I really right. am convinced because it's a shared thing that everybody has an opinion experience. about. Right. Exactly. I was at a That's- bar once and I, you know, I just am terrible at a bar when I was single. And a guy had like, you know, sort of a jacket on with pens in it, like that sleeve or something. And so oh, I was God. like, like do you a have pocket a pen? protector? Have, yeah, no, no, but it was cooler than that. Oh, and so okay. I said to him, like, do you have a pen? You know? uh-huh. <laughs> so, you know, that's the kind of thing. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. I well, mean, yeah. It's just I, an I, oddity. I mean, I like to right. But, so you have to observe a little bit. You have to look around and kind yeah, of try to engage present. in what's happening. Yes, be present. Yeah, the, the, the list of questions were hilarious on the Internet. Um, yeah. What's your favorite way to waste time? That was one of them. I mean, you could sort of, I could so, imagine asking that when there's a lull in the conversation. Right, but you know, not a starter. Exactly. Those starters? Exactly. I know. Those were the starters that I found. Yeah, I, did, I, did, I don't agree. Yeah. I don't agree. Internet. It, it really is. Look, this is why you need live, real people. Okay. So one of the other things that I think is an important thing to point out in a in a conversation with um, especially someone, well, it, it doesn't even need to be someone new. It can really be anyone. Going back to that, be interested instead of interesting. Yeah. I think that uh, a lot of times people, people get caught up with being right in conversations or hearing a, a a point of view that they don't agree with, or they're just sort of waiting out the time to be able to interject what they have to say. And this is sort of a dimension of letting your ego get in the way when you have to, when you want to. So you're saying in a new relationship, when you're Mm -hmm. talking to somebody, Mm -hmm. don't put up those blocks of like, well, I disagree. You know, I mean, it's exactly my point. Uh, So that's not going to foster any relationship that anyone wants to be part of. Exactly. Exactly. And the key to all of this is really listening, right? Also observing, as you pointed out, you don't want to miss the pigs in the blanket and you don't want to miss the short pour and all that to kind of, uh, you know, uh, invigorate the conversation. But the other piece is, is listening. And again, not waiting for that pause to share your response and really engaging and being present with what's being said, not interrupting, not disagreeing. Also doing these sort of fundamental principles of active listening. I'm sure, uh, have you heard that phrase before? I have. Yeah. So it is that, um, engagement of, uh, not interrupting, shaking your head, um, nodding without being awkward, repeating back to the person, what you've heard. That's called reflective listening, reflecting back what you've heard. Oh, that seems like something you do in therapy. It's like, what I'm hearing you say <laughs> is that you hate it when I brush my <laughs> teeth in bed. Well, see, this is the thing about uh, sort of therapy becoming so a part of the vernacular of our conversation. Therapists really can't say that anymore. You can't say what, what I hear you talking about? saying is. They can't say what I hear you saying is or anything that sounds like you're imitating a therapist on Saturday Night Live. You have to get more creative in how you reflect back. Right, because it's illegal or just because you'll lose your client? No, because you'll lose your client because oh, they're okay, like, oh, okay. my gosh, this person sounds like a... Oh, you know, I see. They're just like right. a cartoon of a therapist. Exactly. Oh. Exactly. So you do have to be uh, not awkward and creative when you reflect back what you hear. Shut. Yes. And you're yeah. always, and asking questions is a great way to go. Sure. Um, right? To and you can't say, like, how did that make you feel? Like, no. Oh, you yeah. can, oh, these are the buzz. These are the oh. absolutely forbidden, oh. right? I know. So at a party, it's unlikely that if you're trying to meet somebody and they, they take a cracker and cheese, you'll say, how did that make you How'd feel? How did that make you feel? <laughs> right, <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, so you're listening, you're having this engaged conversation. You know, sometimes you need to end the conversation. and. Oh. How yeah. do you do that? I want to hear how you do that. Well, I just, uh, I just, uh, I, um, I, 
I, I know where this is going, so I do it the way you said it was going to go. Oh, I just okay. say okay. like, it's like, what are you doing this afternoon? Or what are you doing later? It's like, right. I'm over here. It's like to the future as if like, oh, now we're talking about the future and I'm out in the future. Right, right. Yeah. So that's what, that's generally a really good technique to um, say, hey, you know, oh, so what are you doing this weekend? What are you doing tomorrow? Although you do have to be careful because it can sound like a proposition, like, hey, I want to do something tomorrow. Um, but if you really want to end the conversation, say, Not oh, Not with yeah. my face. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, have a good time doing that. And uh, it was nice meeting you. Or, hey, take care. Because sometimes it can be um, a little bit uncomfortable to try to end the conversation. Yeah. So. Well, yeah. Yeah. All right, we're going to ending a conversation. Yes. Speaking of ending a conversation, I just had Perry in our ear and we need to end this segment. We'll be uh, back in just a few seconds. Worse. You're listening to Big Wave Strong Boat live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Stay tuned. Intergenerational programming is uniting America due to the tireless efforts of Dr. Ramona Frischman. Retired from the Miami-Dade County Public School System, Dr. Frischman continues to develop intergenerational learning programs aimed to improve the lives of children, young adults, and seniors through unique strategies and public policy in order to establish a mutually supportive agenda. She views intergenerational programs as a resource for policymakers and the general public on economic, social, and personal initiatives that govern our society. Her work bridges the generational gap, providing many individuals the opportunity to explore areas of common ground and celebrate each other's diversity. Contact Ramona Frischman at RamonaLong at AOL.com or visit www.gu.org to learn more about intergenerational programming. Have you ever wondered why some children recover from their symptoms of autism while others never seem to get any better? After 13 years of research, Karen Thomas has recovered her own son from his symptoms of autism naturally. She now shares how she did it with you in her free webinar so that you can have the right resources and knowledge to help your child. The definition of recovery is to regain health. Karen offers this to you in four stages. Healing the gut, natural heavy metal detoxification, balancing the co-infections of autism, brain support, and repair. Register now for this free webinar to help you know what you can do to help your child to sleep better, be more calm, improve focus, and reach their fullest potential to live a happy, healthy life. Go to naturallyrecoveringautism.com forward slash free workshop empowering parents with the resources to naturally recover autism from a mom who's done it welcome back to big wave strong boat i'm your host mary walden here with dean minor and we've been talking about active listening and awesome ways to cultivate fun and fascinating conversations with people you know and people you don't know and people you want to know and I think uh, there's one important thing that we've uh, not talked about, and that's body language, particularly mm. one main thing, and that's smiling. And um, I think when you're looking at someone and giving them the entirety of your attention, being focused and mindful in the conversation, and smiling and with with smiling eyes and a smiling mouth, that really does convey a warmth and is a desire for connection that is really important. Mm. So, yeah. Your thoughts? Yeah, no, I think it's good. I mean, I said a couple of weeks ago when we were talking yeah. that I've been making a conscious effort to just have my wrist resting bitch face to be more mm -hmm. like smiling at, yes. you know, at the Costco or wherever, uh -huh. where you just pass people in the aisle and just smile. And it's amazing. People are sort of arrested, but smile back, you know, yes. it's just, it's, it's, it's kind of a fun game to play to see if you can get people to just smile at you without being like creepy clown guy, creepy, you know? Right. Yeah. You know, what's so cool about that, too, is actually um, one of the skills that I teach is uh, from a it's a dialectical behavior therapy skill um, is half smiling. And it's basically I would call that a sneer. A <laughs> sneer. <laughs> well, you do want to be tuned in that it is not just another version of resting bitch face um, to really tune in to your mouth and settle down and just offer sort of that Mona Lisa smile. Mm. 
Right. That's what Adding, I do. It's not, yeah. like, it's not like a full on like toothy grin, like I'm going to sell you a water filtration system. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but having that half smile and then adding uh, your palms to your side, if you, if that's available to you, if you're not pushing a card at Costco, uh, to have your hands at your side with your palms facing up, having that half smile and those palms facing up, that really can impact your physiology and ultimately your mood. Wait, so, palms at your side, like touching your, your thighs? Side, kind of your hands down at your side, but turning your palms out and up. Hmm. So it's a more open stance. It's an okay. energetically sort of, you can even lift the arms up a little bit. They don't have to be slammed against your side, but, uh, opening, opening the hands up. That's actually called open hands stance. Hmm. It's, uh, popular in yoga. It's, um, we also do this in, um, helping people regulate their moods. So it really does have a transformative effect on how you're feeling. And now, are you feeling better now that you have more of a Mona Lisa smile than if you were, had your old resting bitch face? Have you noticed a difference? Yeah. I mean, I think you could assume the position and you do. I think that when you put it on, it's just, it's a connection with the people. And I think that goes back yes. to the core of what you're saying, that relationships make people happier. And even if it's just a smile or a nod, you feel connected because I do believe that we're all the same being. And when you recognize that in other people, you're recognizing it in yourself. Yes. So. Yes. How's and honoring that? that. I love yes. that. Yeah. I love that. And you're honoring that and you're honoring, you know, the struggle of uh, getting through every day. Right. I mean, and knocking off the things off your list and going to the grocery store at Costco and whatever. And and looking and, and taking that moment to really identify another person and their whole, I'm oftentimes struck when I just notice people across, you know, an aisle or something like that and think of all the different relationships they have, all the people they mm. know and uh, family they have and people love them and are concerned about them. And, um, it it really is uh it really does help cultivate that uh feeling of connection. Mm. So as usual, this was so fun to chat with you tonight. And fast. You know? Thanks. Yeah, it went and really fast. fast. Yeah. Yes. So uh just as a reminder, if you want to listen to our past shows, you can go on iTunes and search Big Wave Strong Boat and you can subscribe for free. You can also send us an email in between shows at bigwavestrongboat at gmail.com or post on our Facebook at Big Wave Strong Boat. It was really great listening, uh, uh, talking with you guys tonight and uh, talking with you, Dino. We will talk to you guys next week. Thanks for joining us on Big Wave Strong Boat. See you soon. You've been listening to Big Wave Strong Boat with host Mary Walden. Join us each week as Mary helps cultivate the essential ingredients for a joyful life, including self-respect, self-compassion, resilience, and developing lifelong meaningful relationships here on Big Wave's Strong Boat. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.